Hello everyone and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian if you're new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming and checking out this video. That's what you get for uh, subscribing by the way. An extra thank you at the start of these videos. Now in today's video, we're gonna dive into my Reaper controller guide. This is the one through 90 guide in which that I'm gonna go through how you set up your controller, going over all your skills, and furthermore diving into macros and even at the end of it my glamour because typically i get asked in the comments about hey what what glamour are you wearing so i'm trying to cover all of it however not everything in this video you might find useful to your needs so feel free to use the chapter markers at the bottom of this video to be able to jump to whatever section you're looking for the most and hopefully you get something really good from this video if you have any questions after feel free to ask in the comments hit me up on discord or if you use twitter you can hit me up over there as well all the information that you need to find is in the description of this video and furthermore if you guys are new and you want to set it up just like how i have it in the uh in this video i have the top pin comment which will give you a link to the macros to instantly set up all your hot bars exactly like you see them in this video. Now, that doesn't mean you have to keep everything exactly the same. I encourage you to experiment, find something that's very comfortable for you, find something that's very uh, muscle memory driven for you, because that's really important when playing this game, especially on controller, um, but make it your own. But this should hopefully help reduce the overall setup time. Now, after this video, or if you're looking for any more information about how to play 14, on a controller setup check out my n walker controller guides playlist that is specifically on the channel page uh, all the previous guides are in the Shadowbringers playlist but as i get them updated for n walker note that you'll find newer versions there that will also be linked for you now this intro has been long enough so i want to go ahead and start diving actually into the core game and hopefully get you guys going when it comes to the reaper let's go ahead and dive in especially with our setup and how we get started playing on the controller now, whether you've done this uh, before or not, in fact, if you have already got yourself set up, you can easily skip this section. I'll see you guys in the next section. Thanks for being here, but let's go ahead and dive in. It's gonna be under your system and character configuration menu. Now, before we actually dive in, I do wanna point out something regarding my movement. This macro will also be included. Uh, if you go into the system and gamepad settings and then button configuration, one of the things I do is I mapped my R3 click to execute macro 99. Now I'll show you guys macro 99 uh, here in the macro section, but note that I've made that one slight modification. And the other thing is, is that allows me to click on the right stick and be able to summon my mount. Or if I don't want to wear so right amount and I'm in a dungeon, if you click it, it's actually gonna act as a sprint function. But out in the open world, I can jump and it's still actually activate the sprint function. So note that that's something very different from what I've done previously, if you've seen my guides before, uh, and so hopefully that is a good help for you. But let's go ahead and get back into it. System, character configuration, and then you can see here gamepad mode is turned on. If you are using mouse and keyboard, you might have something that looks like this, but your gamepad is still actually active regardless of whether you're in gamepad mode or not. You actually just get two different UIs, two different settings that you can control. So ideally, I would recommend using gamepad mode and my preference ends up being for legacy game type movement. As you can see here, as I'm running around on the screen, moving the stick in all directions, my character moves in whatever direction the stick is facing. Now, I go over all of these details in my complete controller guide that is in the description of this video. But beyond that, I want to focus in on a couple key aspects uh, in the general tab. That's general and then obviously filters under custom. I turn off party members. I turn off pets. I have minions and signs turned off, but I have everything else checked. That's going to be completely up to you. There are predefined filters that you can kind of play around with. This means when your weapon is put away. Now, when your weapon is drawn, then I only focus in on enemies, aggroing, uh, aggroing enemies and duty specific enemies, which allows me to when I press uh, left and right on the D-pad to be able to target those enemies to kind of highlight that. You can see here uh, if there was more things to target than there would and I've turned off minions. So not necessarily the best case example, but ultimately, if you press down on the L uh, stick, you can draw your weapon and you'll still continue to focus in on just those enemies it helps make things easier uh, the other ways you can do it is hold down the left trigger or the right trigger and use our bumpers or etc to be able to kind of tar uh, tab target easily within that and targeting is going to be one of the most critical aspects of playing any of these jobs on controller 
The rest of the focus is going to be under your hotbar settings. Uh, you can see here I've got display recast timers, hide unassigned slots. If I turn that off, uh, you can see lots of little gray floating bars, and we'll talk more about that in my HUD setup. Uh, enable hotbar cycling, include hotbar, drag, uh, enable drag and drop, and I've got various different hotbars all set up. Ultimately, we're going to cover more details about this in the HUD settings, but you can kind of take a look here, snapshot, uh, if you will, if you need. Under sharing, I've got hotbar one through five set to job specific, while six through 10 are shared, meaning no matter what job class I'm playing, these are all going to be the same. My cross hotbar one through six are job specific, while seven and eight are shared. Again, personal preference, but I recommend using a mix of both uh, whenever you start setting up multiple jobs in the game. Uh, enable cross hotbar is turned on. Always display is turned on, but if you ever want to clean up a little bit of your UI, uh, you can do that and then essentially it kicks in whenever you're holding down the trigger uh, i have display hotbar help turned off this is one that you actually have to hit apply to see so if you have that turned on you'll see these little abilities names pop up above the hotbars themselves but as you kind of learn what the abilities are you can turn those off as well use hit pet hotbar uh, po hit, use pet hotbar for <laughs> mount actions can't read enable duty uh, action input and display the control guide are turned on I play in hold mode, but if you're working on various dexterity, uh, you might find toggle or mix mode more your preference. You will lose out on the expanded cross op bar and even the W cross op bar listed right here as well. So note that's going to be kind of something you need to pay attention to. Then I've got it set up to always display W cross op bar, return to W cross op bar after hot bar input. So if I kind of just tap double tap into it and use the ability, boom, then I'm automatically back into my regular cross hop bar and you can position it separately if desired. If you're struggling with double hop crossbar thing, whatever <laughs> input, uh, you can change up your, uh, your timer right here. So that's something that you can kind of control and play around with. And then finally, under the expanded controls, LT plus RT or RT plus LT, I've set that to two left and two right on my cross hop bar. That's essentially if I hold down RB and go to two, that's where you'll see those listed right here. Uh, and so by default, I'm on one. And so then I can use this to kind of get into these expanded skills. And we'll talk about my logic here in just a little bit. And then I have display uh, enable W cross hop bar with double tap. And I've got that set to three left and three right. Note, you cannot drag skills onto these little windows. You literally have to go into three, your hop bar link, because this is just kind of like a shortcut link. And then you can drag and drop that accordingly. So if you want to reposition, uh, that's going to be how you're going to end up doing that. You can always edit your cross hop bar easily by holding down the left trigger or the right trigger and then selecting the ability and selecting what to move it into. Again, I go into way more depth about that feature and this system uh, for you in my uh, complete controller guide. But the other thing to kind of point out for you guys as well is if I go into actions and traits and let's say you want to drag these skills onto kind of these floating hop bars, but you don't have a mouse. Well, you can go into it. You can press down on the L1 uh, or the L bumper button and then down on the right stick. And now all of a sudden your uh, controller is in mouse and keyboard mode and you can drag and drop various skills onto the hop bars themselves, pressing L1 and R3 again will return your camera to base mount movement. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's a lot of little shortcuts. If you guys want more of those tips, I've already kind of plugged my videos, but I'm sure somebody on YouTube will try and help you out as well. So further uh, more going down and continuing in this regards, I have enabled custom uh, filtering when my weapon is sheet to go to one, seven and eight. So my main hop bar and my shared hop bars. And then I have uh, when my weapon is drawn to keep it locked onto hop bar one and to highlight what this looks like and how this plays out. With my weapon sheath, I can press R1 and tab between my various hop bars is how I can get to repairs and a couple other things. But if I have my weapon out, if I press R bumper, R1, it's going to not move at all. So now we come to our Reaper skill overview. This is where we're gonna dive through each and all the skills when you learn them. Uh, this will hopefully give you guys a good understanding of this job and what it's capable of. Uh, and then we'll jump into the next section, which is gonna be why I lay out my layout the way I lay it out. And that's just gonna be, I think, a lot of fun that we're gonna have uh, with the job itself. So at first you get level one and that's level, that's a slice. Note that all of the skill potencies, recast timers are all based off of my current gear at level 90 so as you level these values will change but the the order in which that you are you learn them won't so in that regards all right so you got slice uh it's a uh, delivers attack with a potency of 300 increases your soul gauge by 10 waxing slice delivers an attack with a potency of 140 
Uh, combo action is slice. So if you combo it, you're going to get 380 potency and it's going to increase your soul gauge by 10. Shadow of Death delivers an attack with a potency of 300. Affects targets with death design, increasing damage dealt to the target by 10% for 30 seconds. This uh, extends the duration of death design by 30 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds and increases your soul gauge by 10 if the target is KO'd before the effect expires. Then you have Harp. This deals unexpected damage with a potency of 300. This is a ranged cast ability. There's ways to make an insta cast, and that is essentially using uh, your Hell's Ingress and your Hell's Egress. Uh, this is quickly dash 15 yams forward, allowing Harp to be cast immediately, and that's going to give you 15 seconds to do that. Additional effects leaves behind a Hell's Gate at the point of origin and grants threshold to self. Uh, that's going to last 10 seconds, cannot be executed while bound, and shares a recast timer with Hell's Egress which is going to give you a 15 yam dash backwards. Also, again, allows Harp to be cast immediately. And it leaves behind that Hell's Gate at the port of origin and also grants threshold on self. Cannot be used while bound and shares a recast timer with Hell's Egress. Spinning Scythe level 25 delivers an attack potency of 140 to all nearby enemies and it increases your soul gauge by 10. Infernal Slice delivers an attack with a potency of 140. Combo Action Waxing Slice with a combo potency of 460 increases your soul gauge by 10 and so waxing slice is this so this is kind of your single target combo whirl of death delivers an attack with a potency of 100 to all enemies nearby the additional effect affects targets with death design increasing damage you deal by 10 percent it's gonna last 30 seconds can be extended up to 60 seconds if you use it twice increases your soul gauge by 10 if target is ko'd before the effect expires arcane crest Grants Crest of the bar of, of Time Borrowed to self, creating a barrier that nullifies damage, totaling of 10% of maximum HP. It's going to last five seconds. It grants Crest of Time Return to self and nearby party members within a radius of 15 yams when barrier is completely absorbed. Crest of Time Return effect is going to gradually restore your HP with a cure potency of 50, and that's going to last for 15 seconds. This is really good when incoming damage can't be avoided, so that way you can get a little bit of curing on yourself. Nightmare Scythe, this is a combo for spinning, uh, delivers an attack with a potency of 120. If you combo it, it's going to be 180 potency. Then you've got Bloodstock. Uh, this is going to summon your avatar to deliver an attack with a potency of 340. Grant Soul Reaver, it's going to last 30 seconds. Stack count will be reduced to 1 when already under the effect of Soul Reaver. And Soul Gauge cost is 50. Shares a recast timer with uh, avatar attacks except for Gluttony. And this action changes to Lemur Slice while under the effect of Enshroud. Then you have Grim Swath. Summon your avatar to deliver an attack with you at the potency of 140, all nearby enemies in a cone before you. Uh, this is going to grant Soul Reaver for 30 seconds. The stack will count and be reduced to one when already under the effect of Soul Reaver. Soul Gauge cost is going to be 50 and shares a recast timer with all avatar attacks except for Glo uh, Gluttony. And this also changes to Lemur Scythe uh, when under the effect of Enshroud. Soul Slice delivers an attack with a potency of 460 and increases Soul Gauge by 50. And that's going to have two charges and it shares a recast timer with soul scythe then you have soul scythe here uh it delivers an attack potency with 180 to all nearby enemies increases soul gauge by 50 and it's going to have a maximum of two charges and it shares a recast timer with soul slice then you have gibbet it delivers an attack with the potency of 400 uh and 460 461 executed from the target's flank <laughs> i was like well my my brain flipped out on me with that period uh enhanced gibbet potency is 460 flank enhanced potency is 520 Additional effect grants enhanced gallows. Duration is going to last 60 seconds. The action bloodstock changes to unveiled gallows while under the effect of enhanced gallows. And the additional effect increases a, a shroud gauge by 10. It can only be executed while under the effect of soul reaver. Uh, action changes to void reaping while under the effect of enshroud. Then you have guillotine. Delivers an attack potency of 200 to all enemies in a cone before you. Increases shroud gauge by 10. Can only be executed while under the effect of soul reaver. You have Arcane Circle, increases damage dealt to self and nearby party members by 3%, will last 20 seconds. It also grants Circle Sacrifice to self and nearby party members, which will last 5 seconds, and grants Bloodsborne Circle to self, which will last 6 seconds. Circle Sacrifice effect is when, all, uh, when, all, when you or your party members under this effect successfully land weapon skills or cast a spell, the Reaper who applied it may be granted a stack of Immortal Sacrifice up to a maximum of 8. That's going to last 30 seconds. And Blood of Circle effect allows you to accumulate stacks of Immortal Sacrifice from party members under the effect of Circle of Sacrifice. Then you have Gluttony. Uh, this is going to summon your avatar to deal unexpected damage to a target to all enemies nearby with the potency of 500. For the first enemy and 25% less for all remaining enemies. Grants two stacks of Soul Reaver, which will last 30 seconds, and it's going to cost you 50 of your Soul Gauge. Then you have Enshroud. 
offers your flesh as a vessel for your avatar, gaining a maximum stack of Lemore Shroud. It's going to last 30 seconds. Certain actions can be executed while playing uh, host to your avatar. Shroud gauge cost is going to be 50. And then you have Soul Sow. Grants Soul Sow to self, changing the action to Harvest Moon. Uh, cast time is instant when used outside of battle. So if I were actually just to go ahead and use that right now, you can see here it's instant and you see the skill immediately turns into Harvest Moon, which is a ranged AoE skill. And so we'll cover that here in a second. And then you have Plentiful Harvest. Delivers an attack to all enemies in a straight line before you with a potency of 520 for the first and a 60% damage fall off for remaining enemies. Immortal Sacrifice cost is one stack. Potency increases up to 800 as stacks of Immortal Sacrifice exceed minimum cost. Increases the Shroud Gauge by 50 and cannot be executed while under the effect of Blood Sound Circle. Consumes all stacks of Immortal Sacrifice upon execution. Then you have Kamunda. Deals unexpected damage to the target and all near enemies near it with a potency of 1000 for the first and a 60% fall off for remaining enemies. Enshrouded effect expires upon execution, requires at least one stack of the more shroud to execute. Then you have a couple of things here. You have Unveiled Gibbet. Uh, this summons your avatar to deliver an attack with a potency of 400. It grants Soul Reaver. Uh, stack count will be reduced to one when already under the effect of Soul Reaver. And then you could see your soul gauge cost of 50 could only be executed one of the effect of enhanced gibbet and shares a recast timer with all actions except for gluttony and unveiled gallows it summons your avatar to deliver an attack with the potency of 400 grant soul reaver with 30 second duration stack count will be reduced to one while under the effect of soul reaver Soul gauge is going to cost 50 and can only be executed one of the effect of enhanced gallows shares a recast timer with all avatar attacks except for gluttony then you have Regress. This is going to move instantly back to the Hell's Gate uh, left behind you. can only be executed while you have that threshold uh, stack on you. Then you have Void Reaping. Delivers an attack with a potency of 460. Enhanced Void Reaping potency is 520. Grants Enhanced Cross Reaping. And Grants Void Shroud can only be executed while under the effect of Enshrouded. Uh, recast Timer cannot be affected uh, by status effects or gear attributes. And it's going to cost you one the more Shroud. Cross Reaping. It delivers an attack potency of 460 with Enhanced at 520. Grants an Enhanced Void Reaping. Grants Void Shroud can only be executed while under the effect of Lemore Shroud. And Recast Timer can only be affected by uh, gear attributes, with Lemore Shroud being costing one. You have Grim Reaping. It delivers an attack with a potency of 200 to all enemies in a cone before you. Grants Void Shroud can only be executed while under the effect of Enshrouded. And again, Lemore Shroud cost. And then you see here Harvest Moon delivers unexpected damage to the target and all nearby enemies with a potency of 600 for the first and 50% less for remaining enemies. Can only be executed one in the effect of Soul Sow. Lemore Slice delivers an attack potency of 200. Void Shroud cost is 2. Shares recast timer with Lemore Slice in this regards. Uh, and then you have Lemore Slice uh, delivers an attack potency of 100. All enemies are going to come before you. Void cast, uh, shard, shard cast is 2. And it shares that recast timer. So we've just gone over a lot of the abilities and you can see them all listed here. So let's go over uh, my layout and setup and let's talk about them and the kind of the logic behind it. And then we'll go through HUD and macros and finally glamors. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at this. We got uh, on the double cross hop bar up, I've got Hell's Ingress and Hell's Egress. This is uh, basically as I'm moving, if I need to be able to get uh, anywhere, I can easily just kind of pop in and pop out as needed. So it gives me the ability to double tap and move. Then you can see here, I still also have Harp. Harp has a, a cast timer to it, but this gives me the ability to be able to use Harp on the move, especially if I'm pairing it with Hell's Egress and Hell's Ingress. I have Arm's Length, which is going to create a nullifying barrier behind me. This is a uh, shared roll uh, action. And then if I get hit, it's going to put slow on it. I love this as a tank, but it's uh, nothing less. It's still good to be able to basically be able to not get knocked off of places if that ends up being part of the mechanic. And I also have Limit Break listed up here as well. Then here on the left hand side, I think of this as my AOE kind of circle of pain. I've got Spinning Scythe, I got Nightmare Scythe, I've got Soul Scythe, and I got World of Death. And then over here I got Gluttony, Bloodstock, Arcane Crest, and Harvest Moon, which was that Soul Scythe. So if I actually target somebody, I can use that. But you can see here it's ready to go whenever I need it to go. So it's pretty good to be able to kind of have this whenever you need this. Uh, so if you're out of battle, you know, you should be able to kind of have that at, at available to you at all times. Then over here on the right hand side i've got slice waxing slice and infernal slice this is kind of my single target combo and then i have shadow of death to be able to apply that uh, debuff as well as kind of keep this up on the target then i've got gluttony in shroud arcane circle and bloodbath a to heal me same thing kind of with this especially if i need it uh, and this also essentially should be paired with this at all times whenever you can 
and then finally here on the w cross off our top part i got second win hell's ingress and regress and harp all again so if whether a single target moving left or right it should be working exactly as expected then i've got faint in shroud arm's length and limit break here on the w cross up up of our top going over to hot bar two in this case which i skipped apparently uh, i've got gallows gibbet bloodstock soul slice plentiful harvest commendo harp and true north so as i go into like if i'm doing my single target rotation as i go into it i can easily jump into here and be able to use these abilities and fire them off real easily so that's kind of using my pure reaper uh setup and then same thing over here on uh hop r2 i've got soul slice grim swath guillotine leg sweep for stuns then plentiful harvest Komundo harp and in shroud so same kind of concept except for on the aoe side so if i'm doing my aoe's like if i'm over here boom boom i can easily pop in here and do this to highlight this let's say whether i'm doing kind of an aoe rotation or not i could be over here just pulling in doing aoe damage or if it was a single target i could list this right here this gives me the power to be able to go in say well, all right like i don't have access to some of these abilities but i do have a little bit of uh, power here i can go in shroud and all of a sudden now i am listed here now what i do here is typically especially when it comes to any kind of positional i try to list the positionals in a way that's saying left and right is going to be backwards and forwards so see here like if i want to do uh you know give it or gimlet one of those abilities i have that ability and flexibility that i can sit here and do that and know which position that i need to be in and be applied to so i try to make the ui work ultimately for me in this regards and then using this combo to build up my damage and continue to apply uh, those aspects so that's essentially kind of the logic and the reasoning behind it again if i want to get back or if i want to get forward i have the ability so when i look at the ui and look at the position of the skills themselves they're basically trying to tell me if i have a positional in place where i need to be it's obviously for the reaper it's not always a one-to-one -one aspect but that's just essentially kind of how i'm thinking about it and how i ultimately approach it now if we go ahead and take a little bit of a look here at my hud layout you can see here i've got a couple of things i got my hotbar 4 list right here you can always pull up your settings and kind of play around with how it looks and feels and that's kind of what i was hinting at earlier and i put some skills here to kind of communicate to me when things are on cooldown and ultimately what i need to do uh, in that regards now i uh, i didn't mean to actually close out of my hud uh, i've got my soul gauge i've got my status effects that are all split up and then essentially behind that i have a little progress bar i can kind of move out of the way and my enfeeblements because i have my death gauge listed right here as well i've got hop bar three with a couple of skills to continue to communicate to me what i need to be kind of paying attention to my parameter bar my target bar experience and things like that and then i had down here i have my focus target bar and i've got my party list all set up you'll notice that my minimap is turned off i do not play with the minimap uh, in this game it actually improves it overall i hope to actually release a video on that here in the next couple of weeks and i'm um, hopefully you guys enjoy that but oh all in all like i feel like pretty confident with the layout and how i've got everything uh configured and so just dragging and dropping things onto this ends up being very valuable now like i said at the beginning let's talk about our macros most of the macros here are actually to set up these skills so use the link in the description to jump into and be able to easily just right click and execute and set your skills so you don't have to worry about dragging and dropping or pausing the video or taking a picture of the video to try and figure out what my mappings are you can easily do this yourself but then also you'll find in the document my my uh, movement roulette uh, kind of mental roulette i have uh Fenrir listed here you don't need that i have that because i have an unlocked mount speed increases in all of the areas so that's just my personal preference and once that's done i'll go back to flying mountain roulette and all will be right with the world so macros i think are pretty simple so head and macros section has been complete and i think that brings me right into the final section of this video which is my glamour section right now i'm currently rocking a non-enhanced version of the scythe meaning i don't have any <laughs> any materia applied to it but this is the level um uh one uh one uh, excuse me not 180 580 uh classical war scythe then i've got all my uh 89 90 gear uh but you can see here it's glamoured uh with the set from rathalos so this is the rathalos helm a body legs and feet and i just think it looks really really cool and then over here on the right hand side i've got all the uh upgraded 580 crafted uh gear uh for the reaper currently so hopefully that helps answer any questions hopefully you get some cool design decisions this is the high quality stuff and i highly encourage if you get the opportunity go out and find that 
Now that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for your time. Hopefully you got something good out of it. I really appreciate uh, you watching, especially if you watch the whole thing through. If you feel like I earn it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you like MMORPG content. Uh, also, uh, yeah, that's kind of me, uh, the final pitch. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Hopefully you have a fantastic day. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video, but until then, take care. Yeah. It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with the clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, yeah.